Hello you are, Chikel67 Gaming and hopefully you've been following this series and more importantly voting um, we've We're been... doing the best games of the decade year by year And which year are we up to? We're up to 2014 So we'll uh, have a little chat about what games we think are in the discussion for best game of the year and at the end of the video you get your chance to vote So, another Successful. great year for games. Um, we got um, some new franchises. We got uh, some sequels to games that we've seen before. Um, what will we kick off? The year? Uh, what will we kick off with? What's, what's the first game that springs, springs to, to mind? mind? See, I can't remember that much, but... Uh, We'll go for Mario Kart 8. Okay, we can go for that. Um, so, obviously this was a Wii U exclusive. Yes. Uh, um, where this was like, sort of like Sonic and Sega transformed a bit. Well, it was, because um, you could go water, air and all that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, not to the same extent though as, as that one. But, I mean, it's Mario Kart. Mario Kart's yeah. always going to be a great game. Uh, the gameplay is what makes it. What I was particularly happy with with this one was uh, the blue shell wasn't quite as powerful. Well, well, it was every bit as powerful, but it wasn't like uh, there wasn't in Mario Kart. What was the one before seven? Obviously, um, was that the one where every race there was like about thirty blue shells? Uh, really ruined the game. I'm not sure, but uh, obviously it's a really good game, and uh, it has been ported to the Nintendo Switch. It has. Um, uh, obviously, being one of the uh, starting lineup of games, with uh, being the deluxe edition also on there. Uh, obviously, coming with all the DLC and everything. So, if you do have a Switch or a Wii U, it's actually a really good racing game to pick up. And well, I think it's far more likely that people are going to have a Switch than a Wii U. Um, Unfortunately, the Wii U didn't do anywhere near as as well as it deserved to do. It was probably a little console. But either way, uh, it's a strong recommendation that I'd make. And uh, yeah, just mm, back that in the, in the running now. Uh, another game, new IP that came out. I think everyone was waiting to see um, what Bungie would do after Halo. And I'm not sure that they hit out of the park exactly, but they did give us Destiny. Oh, now I have completed Destiny before. Uh, honestly, a really good, like, you can, even though that you can obviously go between different places, like the different planets in it, uh, there is tons to explore, tons to do, and uh, obviously the mass amount of guns I can unlock all the way up to the exotic variety. Uh, makes it just one of them things where you can keep going back to it uh, and also the shooting mechanics are really good on it and I believe it's just like a fair and balanced shooter that really has all the right elements to make it a great game I'm sure that it was a great game I didn't yeah. actually play it but the one thing that I can't forgive it for is it started this whole games as a service thing where a lot of companies um looking at UAEA, uh, decided that instead of making a game that was fun, they just wanted to extract as much money out of people for as little effort as possible. That, And it started that trend. But if you look past all the microtransactions and all that, uh, it is like the core game is really fantastic. Oh, I'll have to take your word for it because I never actually played it. Uh, another game that came out... 2014 was Alien Isolation. Now this was the first great Alien game. Um, anyone 
who is a fan of the Alien franchise. Actually, maybe not the first Grey on Alien trilogy when PSX was all right. Um, but most Alien games have been a complete letdown because uh, they've ended up being shoot us where you just take aliens out with Ease. with whatever weapon you've got. And, uh, Alien Isolation was the first one that was that was. I can't yeah. say much because I actually haven't played it. it I don't believe. It was like believe. the the first Alien movie, so you weren't looking to find the Alien and kill it because you just couldn't. I mean, that was the idea was to survive as long as you could, basically, and and see what you could achieve. Because um, the Alien was going to take you out if it saw you, uh, and one of the most intense games that you'll ever be likely likely to play because you know that that dread when you when you think that it's close to you and you know it's going to kill you it's just it's that simple um so like i say i was the the first game that really captured the essence of that first film and i think for all alien fans that's kind of what they had waited since 1979 to, to get um so I think that's got to be certainly in the conversation. Um, one of your favourite games uh, this year, I think, came on the Wii U. Did indeed. Super Smash Brothers for Wii U. Yes, it did indeed. Now, um, where do I begin? Really, it Super Smash Bros. is just one of those really good like fighting uh, games. I guess you could call it. Uh, but it's well, that is a fighting game. Yeah, uh, and it's just one of those where obviously it combines all of your favorite Nintendo characters plus some guest characters from some series, uh, and really just the entire like arcade where you can go through it with each character, get the ending and everything is really good. And obviously, it still holds value, being obviously still a running series with Smash Bros. Ultimate on the Switch. Uh, it, uh, it's a game that I've watched you play again, something that I haven't really played myself. Yeah, it's really um, good and I'd recommend it. I don't really get it, if I'm honest. <laughs> yeah, it's not, but it's not something that you're you don't, supposed you, to get. It's a, it's you don't have a health bar. And, no, you have a health percentage. And even when you're dead, you're not dead. I, I, just, I just came yeah. to don't get it. You know, <laughs> and I'm guessing that's what they're supposed to go for. Like You're not supposed to get it. You're supposed to just pick it up, play it, and enjoy it for what it is. Uh, well, you definitely did that when you played through it. Now, going on from this, there is a character in the next game from who was a DLC in Smash Brothers. Now, the next game is Bayonetta 2. Um, criminally underplayed Bayonetta 2. Uh, the, the first game was massively popular. Um, came out on every single came out on every system but this um, one but this again is a Wii U was the Wii exclusive. U exclusive um, something to do with I think Nintendo helped fund the development of the game um, so pr there was a lot of people that were quite upset that they didn't get the chance to play it um, but it's it's more of the same isn't it yeah it's the same concept if you like the, game. Like the first one you like the second one it's and it's, Bayonetta, it's, like, it's like a hacking slash, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, sort of like that. And Bayonet has changed look in the game as well from yeah. that first game but you just, encounter. You, you, you plough through waves of enemies. and Yeah. It, it's mindless fun, but it's definitely fun. And while this one might not be so well played, uh, the first one, everyone should know what it is. And, it, and it's more of the same, but more refined. Um, I mean, plays a little bit. obviously the first one you can get on... Any console, the last generation, I believe it also went uh, backwards compatible. But uh, for being out too, yeah, you do have to have a Wii U, which kind of. Oh, it's on the Switch now. Is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot the, that. The they port, made. They put everything to the Switch now because. Yeah, they made a dual packed in of being at a one and two. They did. But... Uh, so, really, if you have a Switch, uh, no, it's probably something that you should pick up. And our new IP um, from the evil that is EA. Oh. Titanfall. But, yeah, uh, nothing much really to say because I. They didn't I'm, give you a campaign in this no, one. No, they didn't they? give you a campaign in this one, so really it was multiplayer uh, only. It's a little bit like the phone down. I think the, it's a shooter. The, the, it, 
Pre- it, premises you, is good. Yeah, you can't really say much about it because obviously it being just a multiplayer only game, apart from it's a really good shooter uh, and has obviously all the elements that you want uh, from a more futuristic version of like a. Well, well, I think I think the big selling point here was the chance to to pilot a mech. Yeah, you can obviously once you uh, have like charged it up and everything, you can uh, obviously get your Titan to come down from the sky because you don't actually know where it comes from; it just drops down. Yes. And then uh, you just obviously get into it, and then you can just make havoc on your enemies. So there was that. There was another uh, big first-person shooter. Um, a franchise that you're quite familiar with. There was, there was a Far Cry 4, was there not? Yes, there was indeed. Now... Which obviously I never played. Far Cry, <laughs> being in itself, is a more open-world shooter. Like, but it's first-person shooter, not like... So you can't obviously immerse when you're just looking around at your character and that. But, uh, that, but it makes up for it. Um, obviously being... I can't remember where it was set. I think it was Kairat. I believe it's the in game world. It was like a jungle though, wasn't it? Yeah, it was like a jungle and uh obviously the big evil body called Pagan Min, uh who I believe is probably one of the best in the series. Um obviously you try and take him down, but you have to go through all the different I believe strongholds, uh and that. But it is really good and if you do know it has a secret ending where if you wait fifty minutes at the very beginning you basically side with a uh, pagan oh, right. himself, so yeah. So that's the easy way to finish the game. Yeah, that's the easy way to finish the game in 15 minutes. Yeah, There was a game that came out this year that, that kind of ticked a lot of boxes for me. I love role-play games. But you haven't played it till recently, haven't you? Not? Well, reasonably recently. Um, I love role-play games uh, and I love childish, childish humour. So South Park Stick of Truth, truth was just, it was there for me. Um, if anyone is, hasn't played this, yeah, it's just like you're playing an episode of South Park. It's completely indistinguishable from an episode of the show. All the humour is there. Um, apart from you're playing it. Apart from you're playing it. Um, I'm guessing once you're playing it, obviously you can lose yourself and you'll think that like you are just watching the, it. The only thing that I don't, don't praise it for is the they didn't let me play as Cartman. You had to play as your own character. Oh, the new kid. I, I, I wanted to be Cartman, or the better still, Kenny. But anyway. Wait, why would you want to play as a character that dies all the time? Because I would die all the time, and it would be good. It would be funny. Um, so, if, if you know Stick of Truth, you know how great the game is. I, I think it's, uh, it's very, very well documented what people thought of it at the time. No, I see, there's a still think of sequel, it isn't there? There is a sequel now, but... Um, but I think general consensus is that Stick of Truth was the better game. Obviously, Stick of Truth coming with the sequel uh, as a downloadable code, if I remember correctly. If you bought it brand new. I bet. But obviously being out for a while, you can't at the moment unless you buy second hand. But, new. but, but Stick, Stick of Truth, that's the game that you go for. That, that's the better of the two. What else did we have? Um, the game that you played a hell of a lot of, you played Watch Dogs. Yes, indeed. Uh, um, now, there was a lot of controversy when this game came out because they downgraded the graphics from the initial build on PC to get it to run better on consoles. People didn't like that very much. Well, um, But the game itself, what was that like? The game itself is absolutely brilliant. Uh, it it's sort of a shot, but it tends to try and make you not play as a show more of like a stealth no, it's, game. It's just a, it, an it's, open world, I guess. Yeah, it's an open world which has shooting elements in it, but it tries to it steals, make you not does it shoot. Steal, and it, it sort of steals elements from Grand Theft Auto, from Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, uh, and it's like it relies heavily on obviously you being a hacker. Uh, and you can just hack the at basically anything. Um, obviously, the story uh, does go on for quite a long time. I think six chapters. I can't remember exactly. It's been a while since you played it. A game that I never completed, uh, but 
I should really go back to it because it's just that brilliant of a game. You did play an awful lot of it, I think. Okay. You, you probably only stopped to play something else. Yeah, I believe As I got the third or fourth chapter. So. As is the case most of the time, I guess. Um, other games that came out this year. Um, well, that, that's, this was uh, sort of the early days of the, what is now the current generation yeah. of console. Um, and one of the the first big, big hyped games, uh, certainly from Microsoft, was Sunset Overdrive. Now... The free flown combat I liked. Uh, it was open world. Yeah, it was an um, open world where you, have, it's obviously it's a apocalyptic thing, uh, but it's not zombies. It's overdrives or ODs, I believe they're called, because there's this energy drink uh, which is transformed people into monsters. It was completely over the top, but I think yeah, it was over the top, but it did, but it knew that, and it. I think what they tried to do that. was they tried to take. Um, elements of something like Jet Set Radio so it's that kind of free flown movement and shooting and, and the, but it's and like the, a shootout as well well it is um, but they added this over the top element and like all these weird weapons and what have you yeah like but, there was a rocket launcher but instead of rockets it was a teddy bear that came out of a megaphone and there was the the record launcher yeah there well. was the record launcher then you had like a a pilot weapon that shot fire rounds and it was just completely over the top but I knew it and it developed upon that and obviously you got to create your character at the very beginning uh, and it just the story is long-ish but it's like the final mission I'd, I'd say well, spoiler free is probably the best in the game I think for it I mean you go on about the story I think the story was almost incidental. I, I think this was a game that was all about gameplay. Um, yeah, but it's like I I completed the story, uh, and it is a brilliant story. And obviously the gameplay mechanics afterwards, it just the complete like side quests and everything, it can keep you going for ages, really. Well, you certainly played more of it than than I did. Um, I, like I say, I I enjoyed what I played of it, but I got distracted with other things now on um, to a game that you've played more than yeah. i have it's um, the crew the crew i absolutely love the crew <clears throat> um i went into it wanting to love it because um it was developed just down the road from us by ubisoft Ooh. reflections uh, uh i pass their office every day so it was it was great to see that they had done something this um, high caliber well it was ambitious is the word i think i would use for it because the the idea for it was to for the play area it was the continental united states uh all the cities all the con countryside in between no they didn't quite manage that but they, they'd done enough that um that you'd be fooled into thinking that they did when you're driving in New York, you can see the Empire State Building and you can see the Statue of Liberty. And, you know, when you go go to St. Louis, you can see the big arch. And when you go to Vegas, you can drive down the Strip. When you go to um, San Francisco, you can see the, the Golden Gate Bridge. and you know, So it has enough to keep you wanting to go back and it to it. it takes ages to go between the cities. Well, obviously because uh. it's more realistic, <laughs> isn't it, that way? But even even outside the cities, uh, it's not part of the story at all, but, you know, like, you, you go virtual sightseeing, so, you know, I went to Mountain or Rushmore and uh, places like that. Went, went, went up to Niagara Falls and this sort of thing. Um, so, yeah, it just it's an immersive world I, which I keeps you wanting that more. That and it fits so much in it. Um, I mean, the, the game itself, um, it's an open-world driving game. Um, the, the cars feel weighty enough. The, you know, they're, they're responsive without being too arcadey. Just the right balance. Yeah, it's a, just a, a game that, that filled me with joy, but more for the setting than anything else, I would say. Um, I, yeah, if, you, if, if you're into... Virtual, um, tourism. Virtual tourism. This is like your dream game. Um, 
And I, and I loved every minute of that. <sighs> Where will we go next? I'm not sure because obviously there is quite a few. Well, I'll tell you games. where I'm going. Um, we've been dropping some of these excellent indie games into the mix as well. And one that came out that I really, really loved was Valiant Hearts The Great War. I've uh, never played this. Uh, this was uh, a game that was centered around the First World War. Um, and it sort of told the story of uh, a few characters who were involved in uh, in the war uh, from uh, there was a a German soldier uh, and his French wife and there was a French soldier uh, a US soldier who was isn't there one with his dog there was what well, I there was the dog too because um, that's all I know from it because I've only seen like screenshots and little clips the the game gameplay itself uh, plays basically it's a 2d game um, and there's, there's elements of run and gun there's puzzle solving there's platforming there's all that sort of thing um, it was the perfect project for a, a small independent team uh, and it, for me was one of the standout moments of that year's gaming I just absolutely adored it uh, it was the first game that had done the First World War. Um, well, uh, certainly on console. I think Verdun might have been on PC at around about the same time. But w once it done, it done really well, then you got like EA jumped all over it with Battlefield 1. And... Um, but this was the original and the best. <laughs> uh, next up, I think we'll go to Nidhogg. It's hard to believe that it's actually sick years old at this point or well, around about that age I've played it um, obviously not in 2014 I don't believe and uh, it is obviously a very short uh, like oh, no. there's nothing to Nedhog no. Nedhog could have run on the ZX Spectrum uh, graphically and gameplay wise <laughs> it's basically it's a 1v1 and it's like it's a fighter sort of but it's like you're going through different parts of level where uh, you have to try and kill the other person or the CPU, depending on what mode you play, to get at the end. Uh, where it's in multiplayer where yeah, this game shines. It um, is where you can have the competitiveness. I don't, I don't think there's any real joy to be had playing, playing against, against the, the computer, CPU, but playing against friends, it's just it's it's fun, but it's like frustrating at the same time. So it's like it's really good if you play with friends, but uh, obviously. If you play with CPU, it it still is quite a little fun, but uh, obviously not as fun as playing with friends around you or online. But most games are like that. Yes. Um, indeed. Although strangely, not this next one. Uh, next one is it's it absolutely as purely a, a one player experience, and it's Thief. I've played a little bit of this, not enough to speak that much, I don't believe, but uh, I'll let you take the floor, anyways. <laughs> well. This is another game that I think had unrealistic ex expectations, so it possibly doesn't get the love that it deserves. Um, it's essentially uh, an it's sort of an Assassin's Creed game, I would say, um, but in a different universe where instead of playing as some. Now, is this the first one to come out for the series? Because I believe there's a Thief game on PC. So there was a few Thief games on PC, but this was... The one that came on console. This was the, the console. This, this was supposed to be the big breakthrough for the... Thief for series. The, for the, the franchise. Um, but the, the, not whole, the whole... Being sneaky and breaking into, uh, into places and you know, robbing people and what have you. It's probably not the most PC game in the in the world but uh, that whole thing was, was something that we really hadn't done before uh, I kind of got it straight away because as an RPG player if you've ever played in 16 bit RPGs or even a, a few later ones you just walk into people's houses and take everything that, that they own and this was kind of like that but on a much grander scale uh, 
there was quite an engaging storyline as well with uh, with between the your character and a second thief that was uh, that was in the storyline. Um, it just it ticked a lot of boxes for me. It was great. Um, I I think it it helped it that at the time uh, Assassin's Creed had probably gone a bit stale. Um, oh, was this when it was like where the Assassin's Creed games like weren't as received they, until like Syndicate? Well, well, probably at, at this time around I don't know Black Flag Unity, Unity. Um, which is where the series kind of declined a little bit. It, it did, um, and Thief kind of filled that void for a lot of people, and and I just loved it. Not much more you can say, but it is so, that time where we both need to choose a game which neither of us can dispute, and then decide on one on two together sorry and then obviously use cast your vote uh, to decide which on the end screen what I'll you put believe links to are the, is the top game of 2014 i'll put links to the four four games so you can click through and vote um what no. are you voting for what am i putting for um it's hard isn't it because it's, it's not it's hard at all it's, it's south park the stick of truth <laughs> just absolutely is. <laughs> oh, see, now this is hard for me. I'm swithering between a few, but uh, oh, I've got to put Sunset Overdrive through. It's just. Well, I'm not sure that I expected that, but you why? Know. What did you expect me to put? I, I don't know. Just um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you obviously thought a lot more of the game. Yeah, it's um, just one of those brilliant games where you can just play and play and play. Actually, this is probably one of the weaker years. It is, um, but... I haven't got any real standout titles. Uh, see, I'd also love to see The Great War. Valiant Hearts go I through. haven't played it. Um, uh, I'd like Smash Brothers to go through. But you haven't played it either. No, but I, I appreciate it for what it is. I mean, I'll let you, I'll let you have Smash Brothers. Um... There isn't really a standout, is there? No, not really. Um, Destiny. I didn't play it, but... <sighs> Alien Isolation. I'd be happy to do that because obviously you went with one of mine, so I'm not... I'm not there you go, the mine. Alien Isolation completes the four that you have to choose for this video. Yes. So if you could please vote at the end of the video um, and also if you haven't voted on any of the others in yeah. 2010 2011 2012 and 2013 go cast your vote over on them videos um please if you can share this video far and wide so we get more votes on this to get a more representative uh, result um also subscribe uh which yeah if this is your first time and you've liked it put a like on the video and subscribe would appreciate that hugely and also when you subscribe there will be a prompt to get all the notifications or just the occasional ones that you might like but i uh, just put them on because obviously we'll yeah. be doing this for the rest of the decade you so are. you'll uh, not miss when the 2015 one comes out okay um but that's it for this time so please vote and we'll see you in the 2015